Hello guys, I am a medical coding trainer from Indian Healthcare BPO. Previously, we learnt about the structure of skin and in this video, today we are going to learn about accessory structures of skin, disease conditions and their treatment procedures. Guys, now coming to accessory structures of skin, it includes hairs, nails and exocrine glands. Now coming to structure of hair, so hair follicles these are the organs located deep in the dermis region or middle layer of the skin used to produce hairs, usually non-living hairs and base of the hair follicle is surrounded by sensory nerves, again it is called as root hair plexus. There are two regions of the hair, one is the hair root and another one is the hair shaft. Hair root, it is the lower part of the hair and it is attached to the integument or embedded in the dermis region. And your hair shaft, it is upper part of the hair but it is not attached to the integument or skin. Hair shaft includes cuticle, cortex, medulla. Cuticle it is nothing, outermost layer of the hair shaft and it is used to overlapping dead keratinoid cells and used to form shiny surface of the hair also. Next layer cortex it is called the middle layer and dead cells contain hard keratin to provide stiffness to the hair. And innermost layer medulla, it is also called as core layer and dead cells which contain soft keratin and also air to provide flexible. So you can understand now how your hair becomes shiny and how your hair becomes stiffness and how your hair becomes flexible. These are all due to the presence of cuticle cortex medulla of the hair shaft. Guys, you can see erector pili muscle in the picture. Look into the picture now. So, it is the involuntary smooth muscle. Guys, we have different types of muscles in human body like a smooth muscle, skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle. We will discuss more in the musculoskeletal system chapter. Now, coming to here erector pili, it is involuntary smooth muscle and you know there are two types in human body one is involuntary and another one is voluntary so voluntary means with conscious involuntary without conscious most of the internal functions are involuntary and most of your motions or movements are voluntary so this particular smooth muscle or erector pili muscle is involuntary only and it used to causes your hairs to stand up. Sometimes you can feel goosebumps right. So that is due to the presence of this erector pili muscle only. And also you can see sebaceous glands in the picture. So sebaceous it means production of oil, sebum like structures. Sebum is an oil used to lubricate the hair head Hairs are made up of keratin and hairs occurs over the entire body except your palms of the hand and soles of the feet and it is more concentrated in the scalp region about 1 lakh hairs and there are growth of hair takes place in two phases one is anagen phase it is also called as growth phase and second one is resting phase also called as telogen phase now coming to structure and function of nail so your nails are made up of hardened keratin and also it used to protect the ends of the fingers and toes from injury and you can see uh, lunula it is a crescent moon shaped structure or arch shaped or half moon white area at the base of nail bud this is the area where nail growth takes place and you know your nail body is there right it is a visible portion of the nail and it used to covers the nail bed and you can see lateral sides sides of nails is called a lateral and it is lie in lateral nail grooves and also surrounded by lateral nail folds Nail production occurs in a deep epidermal fold near the bone is called the nail root. And you know guys we can identify many metabolic disorders by the structure of linula. That's all about structure and function of nail. 
Next accessory structure of the skin is glands. So the skin has two types of glands. One is sebaceous, another one is sudoriferous. First coming to sebaceous. Sebaceous it is also called as oil gland. It used to produce an oily substance called sebum. And these glands are found near the hair follicles. And these uh, sebum helps make your hair soft and flexible. And also it is acidic in nature so it helps to destroy microbes which enter the skin surface the second important exocrine gland present in the skin is a sudoriferous it is nothing also called as a sweat gland and it used to produce a sweat only there are two types of a sudoriferous gland one is acrine gland another one is apocrine gland acrine gland is used to produce watery sweat like structures only and their main purpose is to regulate body temperature and second one apocrine gland it is express after the puberty stage or at the time of puberty stage and these glands produce a thicker milky sweat which is broken down by bacteria and creating distinct odor or smell so apocrine sweat glands located under the arms and in the groin area groin area means it is an inguinal region it is the junctional area between the abdomen and the thigh on either side of the pubic bones we have one more modified apocrine gland in the ear canal or auditory meatus. It is used to secrete ear wax or cerumen. That's all about the structure and functions and accessory structures of integumentary system. Now coming to disease conditions. Now coming to dermatologic diseases and conditions. So the first one abrasion. Abrasion means removal or scrapping away of the superficial layers of the skin. And next important one abscess. It is nothing. It is like a cavity filled with a purulent matter like a pus you know that one only due to infections. And another important one albinism. An inherited disorder. Then anhydrosis, inability to tolerate heat due to lack of sweat glands. And athlete foot, it is a fungal infection of the foot. Then atopic dermatitis. Guys, itis, the term ends with itis means inflammation only. So here inflammation of the skin. And atrophy, a decline in the functioning of tissues. And birthmark, it is a persistent colored lesion. And callus. Callus means thickening of the skin only. Thickening you can say sclerosis also here. And candida it is a yeast like fungal infection. Then carbuncle it is a bacterial infection especially staphylococcal infections. Caruncle it is a small fleshy growth. And cellulitis inflammation of the cellular or connective tissue. Next to chicken pox, it is a contagious disease, it is a viral infection. Next to contact dermatitis, it is a localized inflammation that is frequently caused by an allergy. Then contusion, it is also a very common disease, hemorrhage which occurs beneath unbroken skin, also called as bruise. And crest, it is a scab containing dried blood, lymph and orpus which occurs in some inflammatory diseases. Next, ecchymosis. It is a very important disease condition. You have to mind the spelling also here. It is an irregularly shaped area of discolored tissue caused by blood hemorrhaging into the skin. Eczema. It is also an important one. It is an inflammatory skin disease typically with redness of the skin and crushing also. Then erythema. Erythema. It is also reddish skin only. Next, fistula, an abnormal channel or a tube which connects two hollow organs. So, you know what is the hollow organ here? Hollow organs means like your small intestine, large intestine, gallbladder, then urinary bladder, stomach. These are all called hollow organs. Then folliculitis, superficial infection and inflammation of the hair follicles. Next, freckle, it is a small yellow or a brown macule only. It is a type of skin lesion 
then pharyngeal it is a tender pus forming nodular infection originating deep in a hair follicle also called a simple boil only and gangrene it is a very important skin disease condition it means death of tissue caused by lack of blood supply and herpes simplex hsv1 and 2 it is viral infections and herpes zoster it is also a viral infection also called shingles next impetigo it is a contagious inflammatory skin disease caused by bacteria next important one jaundice it is also a condition uh, like a yellowish color due to cirrhosis or uh, liver related issues next keloid it is also a firm mobile mass of scar tissue caused by trauma next lipoma the term ends with oma means a tumor or mass so here lipoma it is a benign neoplasm of fat cells mole it is a localized growth of hyperpigmented skin then mycosis it is again fungal infection onycholysis spelling very important it is a condition here nail are loosen from the nail bed parenchyma it is also a very important one inflammation of the skin around the nail it is due to bacteria or fungi then pediculosis infestation by lice causing severe itching then plaque it is a slightly elevated lesion greater than 10 mm and it is larger than a papule papule means it is a type of a skin lesion and it can be a group of papules only next pruritus also called as itching then psoriasis it's a important one ringworm rubella scar scleroderma sclero means it is thickening or hardening derma means it is skin so here thickening of the skin is called scleroderma then systemic lupus erythematosus sle seborrhea rhea means excessive discharge or flow sebum means oil so here over flow of or discharge of oil in skin then tumor vitiligo it is an irregularly shaped patches of milky white non pigmented skin surrounded by skin with normal pigmentation wart and seroderma it is also important disease condition seroderma x e r o d e r m a it means excessive dryness of the skin that's all about disease conditions of dermatology next table common diagnostic tests and procedures in dermatology so the first important one biopsy next frozen section gram stain patch stain scrapings and parasites and zanc test these are the important diagnostic tests next coming to therapeutic procedures used in dermatology the first one allografting so it is nothing transplantation of a graft only graft means a particular tissue or organ from one individual of a species to another individual of the same species like one human to one female to another female like that is called allografting next autografting it is also transplanting a graft obtained from one area of the body to another area of the same individual for example from thigh region to face of the same human body next hemotherapy treating aneuplasm by using drugs in an attempt to eradicate it or reduce its size then cryo surgery using liquid nitrogen or carbon dioxide to achieve freezing temperatures which destroy tissues then curettage and debridement it is also a very important one next derm abrasion so it is a special sandpaper or wire brushes or uh, abrasive materials we can use to remove the fine wrinkles acne scars and tattoos also next electro desiccation so using electric current to destroy tissue or close blood vessels in the skin excision removal or excision of a particular part so here surgically cutting out all or part of a structure then fulguration destroying tissue by using high frequency electric sparks grafting transplanting tissue to replace tissue that has been damaged or destroyed due to disease or injury next important one incision and drainage also called as ind procedure so it is nothing cutting open a lesion and draining its contents 
then more surgery mohs it is a very important one microscopically controlled excising in which superficial cancers are removed following rapid killing of the tissue by chemicals then skin grafting xenografting also important one xenografting it means transplanting a graft obtained from an animal of one species to an animal of a different species you have to note this point one species to different species that is xenografting so that's all about therapeutic procedures of dermatology thank you